What's going on you guys, it's N828 and this is Crossbeats Production. So this video is about how to export your files, basically your mix, for a, uh, a mix session. So, so the mix engineer can actually mix your track and go through that process with you. So basically what, what I want to show you is first off with the effects on your tracks, I'll explain to you a couple of things actually before I, before I get to that. So the first thing is making sure you have enough headroom on your, your master fader. So the master fader is pretty much where you want to look at and just check out the peak level there. As long as your peak level is around about minus seven, minus six, maximum probably minus five. Um, for mastering, that is pretty much the, I guess, desired level that you'd want to get anywhere up in the red or if it's close to the red, you know, minus three, that kind of thing. You want to try and avoid that because obviously that's going to create issues when it comes to headroom for mastering, especially if it's already clipping in your project as it is. With mixing, the main thing I look for when I want files mixed or when I'm mixing files is the WAV file in a full length of the project. So as you can see here, there's a cycle range button here. You can click that on and off. That allows you to cycle the length of your project. So say for example, your length of the project's three minutes, four minutes, whatever it is, uh, you can cycle that and just create a, a loop. So basically just drag this along here until it gets to the end of your, your audio there. So as you can see, there's a loop on the end of the audio and that actually allows you then when you export the track to export the full length of the audio. So it'll appear as a full length, full length three minute track for each track. It could be a kick, it could be a snare, it could be a guitar part, whatever it is. That'll be a full length of that track. And the other thing then is to pay attention to the effects you've got on your 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 um your mixer there. So if you have EQ, uh, turn off the EQ for the most part, unless that's a vital part of the track. And like, for example, using it as a filter and things like that, you could leave it on. If it's using automation as a filter, that's part of your track, so you could leave that. Uh, but if it's if it's something to do with just an EQ that you've done on a vocal and that EQ move is your EQ move that you did on the vocal, uh, unless you're completely 100% satisfied with that and you don't want the mix engineer to touch it, then you can leave it on. If you're not satisfied with the way your vocals sound and you want that to be uh, you know, mixed by the engineer and correctly done and in line with the rest of the tracks, then I would recommend turning off the EQ. And turn off any reverb. You can leave delay things on so if you've got a delay plugin that's again like an automation thing or if it's creating a, a wide vocal that's created by that delay leave that on there otherwise if the delay is just the fact of being a delay and it's just created delay on a vocal for whatever reason and it's not part of the actual track like the the style of the track or an fx on the track then you can turn that off so with pitch pitch correction either way you can leave that on if you wanted to it does alter the way that the signal is processed. If, if that's part of the track, leave it on. If it's not, turn it off. Uh, so as you can see here, pretty much all of my effects are turned off. When I play this track to you, Okay, so as you can see, the levels here are really pretty much peaking at minus seven. Most of the effects that I've got are all off. So if I go back to this mix window there on the faders, everything's all off except for the pitch correction on the actual rap vocal. And I've got an effect here which makes the, the rap. So I've got a vox that pretty much goes wide and it's an effect on the, on the rap. So if that's part of your effect, leave it on there. Um, but if it's not, obviously you can turn it off. So the main thing is to make sure that all of the effects that you've got on your, your plugins that are part of the actual the track so if it's like i said if it's a filter that cuts off certain parts of your track then leave it on there if it's something that's just a normal um part of the vocal and an eq move then you can turn that off so the mix engineer has got full control of that then when you're exporting it the way that you do that is just go to the file tab here go down to export and select all tracks as audio files click that It'll bring you to this page, you can create a new folder down here, it'll show you this little thing down here, new folder. Create a new folder wherever you want that to be on your desktop, wherever it needs to be. 
and then as you can see I've already exported these so pretty much I'll just drag that up a bit so you can see it the full length of that so um, as you can see each each individual track is there it's highlighted uh, so each one has got a you know kick for example I've got my snares down here I've got the roads keys all of that is labeled here so everything's bounced out and it's in the full length of this cycle range here so that cycle range is important to have that checked on and make sure it's there so when it exports it knows exactly the cycle range when you're exporting it make sure it's in WAV and it can be 24 bit mostly 24 bits the best way to have it come through make sure it's export and cycle range only and turn off the normalization because you don't want it to normalize any of the files there and you can just um, put it into a new folder and then hit export once it's exported it takes a bit of time to do that and it'll appear in the folder wherever you've located that folder and then you can send that folder to the person who's mixing it and that's pretty much it and then happy days